Okay, this is going to be part five of the shell method series. Now, if you haven't done it yet, I would definitely watch the first four videos on the shell method, and it'll make this, this one make a lot more sense. Now, as a reminder, we had two equations from previous videos, uh, and the way we worked it out was this. Um, on the first equation, if you take the functions around the x-axis or a horizontal axis, so if you go around a horizontal axis, like this top equation, then put everything in terms of y. <clears throat> now in the last video, we went around the y-axis or a vertical axis. So if you go around a vertical axis, put everything in terms of x. And that's what we did in the last video. So in this video, we're going to take some uh, two functions around the horizontal axis, so we'll put it all in terms of y, so we'll use this top equation right here. So with that in mind, let's take a look at it and see what it looks like. Okay, what we've got is this. Suppose you had uh, the line y is equal to x will be this straight line right here. Then you've got y is equal to x squared, and that will be this curved line right here. Now what we want to do is use the shell method to find the volume of revolution of the solid generated by this region. So if you take this light blue shaded area, and the idea is you're going to roll it around the line y is equal to a negative 2. <clears throat> now what that would be, that's going to be this dotted line right down here. So we'll take this area, roll it around this axis, and when you do, uh, the resulting solid would look something like this. So <clears throat> that's what your solid looks like. Now what we want to do is to uh, find the volume uh, of the solid by rotating this thing. Now just a reminder on the formula again, let's go back and take one last look at that. Uh, since we're going around a horizontal axis, we'll use this top formula here and put everything in terms of y. So if you do that, what the formula looks look like, this is the form we're going to start with. <clears throat> now the problem is just like all the other shell method problems, you've got to find the radius r, so you want to find what is the radius and what is the height. <clears throat> if you can find the radius and the height, then you're good to go on the rest of the problem. Now also, just like on all the other problems, we're going to begin <clears throat> by drawing a one shell inside this thing. Now in this case, I'll start, since I'm going around the horizontal axis, I'll put a horizontal rectangle in here that will look something like this. So if I do it, <clears throat> I'll start about right here and go over like this, make it about that part right there, back like this, and like this. So <clears throat> what that is, that is one edge of the shell, and I'll kind of shade it in here. So uh, that's the thickness of one part of the shell. Now I'll come straight down here and draw uh, another one, just like this, would be the other part of the shell when I revolve it. But if it starts here and goes to here, um, down something like this, uh, over to here, and back to here. And again, I'll shade that too. Now again, <clears throat> when you draw these, you can draw them in freehand. They don't have to be great works of art, but just real lightly, again, I'm going to go ahead and sketch what this thing would look like. So if I drew the shell, it would come down something like this. Uh, it'll go up like this. And one shell would look something like that. We'll just go ahead and let it go with that. So that's what one shell is going to look like. Put this bottom part like this. <clears throat> and again, just rough estimate. Now what you want, <clears throat> you've got to find what is the radius and what is the height. Well, the radius is always, well, it's just like what has been in the other problems, the radius is always the distance from the axis that you're going to rotate it around to the edge of the shell. So the radius would be this height right here. So from there to there, so from the axis that you're rotating around. So that length right there is the radius. Now, what is that radius? Well, um, look at the two things you've got. What you're... Doing. If you go from the original x-axis up to the shell, this little distance right here is y. Then if you, this remaining distance, the distance from here to here, uh, is 2. So this distance goes from 0 to negative 2, so that distance itself is 2. You can get it right off the drawing. So what the radius is, uh, you would have this distance here, y, plus this distance here, 2, so this total distance will be y plus 2, so the radius is going to be y plus 2. Now, that gives you the radius, and you can go ahead and put that in right here, so the radius is going to be y plus 2. Now remember, since this 
going to be integrated with respect to y, we got to put everything in terms of y. So now you've got to find the height. Now what the height is, let's go back to the picture, look at your picture again. The height of the shell is this part right here. So that's going to be the height. But now what is that? Well, what that's going to be, it's going to be the distance to the bottom of the shell. So this distance right here added to, and we'll call that distance x1, added to this distance, or the difference between this distance right here would be x2. So uh, if this is x2 to the top of the shell, and this is x1 to the bottom of the shell, then the height would be the difference in those two. So the height is going to be uh, x2 minus x1. So we kind of move that over here. So we've got the height, you know, the height is going to be the difference in those two x values. So x2 minus x1. Now, you could actually put that over here. If you wanted to, you could put x2 minus x1 right there. That's going to be the height. But the problem is you've got to have it all in terms of x, or pardon me, all in terms of y. You can't have these x's in here. So what you have to do is go back and change each one of these x's into their y equivalent. When I look at what x1 is, let's just start with x2. x2 is the distance from uh, the y-axis to the curve line. So this is going to be x2 right here. So x2 goes to the parabola. Well now, if y is equal to x squared, then what that means is the square root of y would be equal to x2. So x2 is going to be the square root of y. So you can replace this with the square root of y. Then you've got minus x1. Now x1 is the distance to the straight line. That's this one right here. So that just means uh, x is equal to y. So x1 is equal to y. So you have to do this little change right here. And I think I'll put one more thing in here too. Make this be uh, the square root of y is y to the 1 half power minus y. So you do this little conversion right here to put the height in terms of y. So it's okay to start with x's to start with. You'll have the x2 minus x1 will give you the height, but then you have to change it all in terms of y. So what that gets you to over here will be this. The, the radius is y plus 2. That's that distance right there. And the height, once you put it in terms of y, would be this, y to the 1 half minus y. So you've got y to the 1 half minus y. And you're going to do the whole thing dy. Now at this point, the hard part of the problem was over. You needed to find the radius, and you found the radius. You needed to find the height in terms of y, and you got the height in terms of y right there. So now it's just a matter of doing the integral, so let's run through that. So the volume of this thing is going to be equal to 2 pi. And one more thing we need is the limits on this thing. Now what's going to happen, this little, the thickness of this shell right here is differential y. So you're going to integrate this uh, in this direction. And you're going to go from, this is going to be a, and this is going to be b. So you're going to go from 0 to 1. So you're going to go from y equals 0 to y equals 1 of the radius, which is y plus 2, times the height, which is y to the 1 half minus y. Whole thing dy. So now it's just a matter of running through that integral. Now the first thing you've got to do, you've got to FOIL this thing. So we'll do the FOIL method on this. And when you FOIL this, it will turn out to be this. So the volume would be... It's going to be 2 pi times the integral from 0 to 1, and just go ahead and pour this out. So y times y to the 1 half would be y to the 3 halves, and then the outer ones would be minus y squared, then the inner ones would be plus 2y to the 1 half, and then finally the last one would be minus 2y. So when you foil it out, it turns into that thing right there. So now we just keep going through the integral. Okay, so that means that the volume then would be equal to 2 pi. Now find the antiderivative of each term in there. And this was going to become y to the 5 halves divided by 5 halves. 
uh, minus y cubed divided by 3 plus this will be 2 times now this will become y to the 3 halves divided by 3 halves and this will become minus 2 and this will become y squared divided by 2 and then all that will be evaluated between 0 and 1. So now it's just a matter of plugging in the 0 and 1. So you've got the 2 pi so first of all everywhere you've got a y plug in a 1 and actually I think I'll do one more step first I'll simplify this. Let's, let's take the rather than dividing by 5 halves let's make it be multiplied by 2 fifths y to the 5 halves uh, minus y cubed divided by 3 now invert and multiply this one and you would get 4 thirds y to the 3 halves and then finally on this one these twos will cancel out so that one and that one will cancel out and just leave you with a negative y squared uh, and again evaluated from 0 to 1 okay now go ahead and plug the 1 in so the volume would be equal to 2 pi times 2 fifths of 1 to the 5 halves uh, minus 1 cubed divided by 3 plus 4 thirds of 1 to the 3 halves uh, minus 1 squared. Now when you plug in the 0, uh, that entire term will go to 0, so we'll just leave that one out. So continuing on, that's going to give you the volumes equal to 2 pi, and all the 1's just turn into 1, so this is going to become 2 fifths minus 1 third plus 4 thirds uh, minus 1. And that will give you the volume would be equal to 2 pi times, you've got here's 2 fifths, and next thing you do, here's minus 1 third plus 4 thirds would give you 3 thirds, which is just 1. So this turns into a minus 1 plus 1. Uh, let's see, and we'll keep going. So what that will be would be the volume then would be 2 pi times, now on this one the plus 1 and the minus 1 will cancel out which gets you to 2 fifths so the final answer on this thing would be 4 pi divided by 5 and that will be the actual volume by rotating that thing around the line y is equal to a negative 2. Let's kind of go back up and look at the process one more time so if we go back to the top up here, um, now remember you start with the formula. So the very first thing you have to do, you've got to figure out uh, what is the radius and what is the height. It really comes down to that, but you've got to get them in terms of y. So the radius, again, just draw the radius in there. There's the radius and there's the height. So the radius, look at your picture. It's that distance y plus that distance 2. So the radius would be y plus 2, and you've got that. Now to find the height. The height is the height of this black edge of the shell right here. And you can start by just marking off the distance x1 and x2. Well the height is the difference in those two distances. So the height is just x2 minus x1. But you've got to put it, since it's you're going to integrate it with respect to y, you've got to put the whole thing in terms of y. So using your formulas up here, uh, change each one of those x's into the y equivalent and that gives you, now you've got the whole thing in terms of y, so the radius in terms of y and the height in terms of y, and then just plug those into the integral, off you go, and when you run through the integral, uh, you get the final answer. So that's an example of a uh, shell method going around a horizontal line other than the x-axis.